Okay, so I finally managed to take my hoodie off. I've had sort of like the last two casts over half an hour. It's not moved whatsoever. But before that, it was awesome. I've had like six stockies and two big F1s. What I've had to do is cast a little bit further to the banking because the fish ended up in sort of like 18 inches to two foot. So that's what I mean, always be adaptive in your fishing. Chase them, if they're not in that deeper water, just chase them. So what I'm gonna do now is go into the maggot feeder because I can't get a bite with a carp now. They've just completely gone. It's gone flat calm fish just don't want to know basically it was sort of like midday um so the beauty of the maggot feeder is obviously you're carrying on putting fish in your net until you get to the all important sort of fish catching time which is usually two o'clock onwards before i do that what i need to do is move me keep net. i always use my keep nets for me resting my rods on but it'd be the same principle of using a rod rest when you can't fishing you wait until that fish is on when you're fishing for silvers, roach, skimmers, eyes, whatever, you've got to make sure that rod's over your knee so you're straight into them. So what I'm going to do is move my keep net up to there so I can be in direct contact with that rod. So, maggot feed we've got, as I said, I've taught you through it before, nice and simple, got like 20, 22 inch hook length on. I'm going to put double maggot on. Uh, now I will hook the maggots, get in on it, Rich. I'm going to go, first one is through the little frilly bit, on the fat end don't burst it and my second one i'm going to go the opposite way around through the thin end again again i don't want to burst it so 16s up look at all the life in them they're like ah, get me off this all get me off it that's amazing if i were a fish i'd nail it now a couple of things to think about with a maggot feeder i don't want to sort of like go in thinking ah, yeah it's nice and warm the fish are going to proper have it which hopefully they will do i'm going to start off on a smaller feeder if it is that you know getting loads of fish there and like bigger ones are coming through I feel I need to put more bait in then obviously I can change to a slightly bigger feeder it's not heavy I've only got like the 10 gram uh, lead on the bottom because I'm only chucking it sort of well over my pellet cone line when I started off so what is it like 20 22 meters something like that I'm not casting it out far what I'm going to do so the beauty of these feeders I'm going to fill it to the top but an important tip here is when you go to, just before you go to cast it in, you see how the maggots are crawling out already? You've got to slightly dunk it under the water first. Don't just cast it out like this, because you'll have bait everywhere. So first thing I'm going to do, dink it under the water, wind it up. I've got my marker where I'm aiming, so I can be nice and quick. Feather it down. It's hit the bottom now. So what I'm going to do, none of this sort of like sinking your line slow. I want to be in business straight away. So whack the line up, and I'm going to give it a pull so that if you can imagine your hook length, what I've got to do is drag it over where my feed is, or there or thereabouts. Now, with silvers fishing, again, experiment on the day, but usually, it's just like when you're pole fishing or fishing with a waggler, when you give it a little twitch, that's usually when you get a bite. So I'm going to leave it settling for sort of 20, 30 seconds at a time, and I'm going to give it a little, little tiny movement. I want to move it sort of like, well, it doesn't really matter, anything from sort of two to six inches at a time. And as I say, usually you get your get your bite just after that little movement. See that, that was a little dink then, yep, and he's on. So if I hadn't have caught that fish then, I would have just left it. Because as I said, that, that bait's going over a little bit of an area. Imagine that feeder's coming down, you know, it's releasing them maggots. It's probably a little roach or something. Yeah. Oop, I missed it, we missed it, Rich. So a little tiny roach, again, trap that reel, so you've got a nice tight bend in your rod. And fish like that, you can expect pretty constant to be honest with you on a maggot feeder that's the beauty of it so i'm constantly putting fish in my net and obviously as a match angler for me that is so important now it'd be different if it was like an all carp match but where you know you're fishing for for everything and again it just comes down to like the beauty of maggots they will catch absolutely everything um then obviously don't just sort of like sit there waiting for things to happen you make things happen so I've clipped up there, again, it's hit the bottom. Now, whack the line up, nice pull, so your bait's coming over your feed, and you're just waiting. So you saw that one before when you had that little roach. Little baby roach. I've given it a little twitch, tip's gone round, I've wound into it. No striking whatsoever, just wind into it. And then, it's pretty similar to the waggle, you can get sort of like two or three goes at it. I'm just going to give it a twitch now. So if I didn't um, hook into the fish on that first strike, I'd have just left it. You know, I don't want to like wind back and you know keep, carry on casting in if I missed a bite. Your bait's going over quite a bit of a, a, a bigger area, and the beauty of silvers, they will, you know, sort of like they're always scurrying around. They, they will search for your bait, uh, and that, that's the beauty of this style of fishing. You, 
you're constantly putting putting fish in your net, uh, and you know you're going to catch everything. You're going to catch sort of like the bigger skimmers. Usually it's sort of like roach, um, some big perch in here. You know, carp f ones. Everything you can think of will come into that feed. See, a little tiny dink. Then I'm just going to give that a bit of encouragement. And again, I've not got a tight bend in that rod. I never fish with a big bend in the rod um, because to me, if you've got too tight a line from obviously your tip to where where the fish are taking your bait, the, the fish will pick up on that. Um, look at that, that was going then. That was a line, that was a little dink then. Should have struck, but I'm talking, Ooh. nope, he's not on, so I'm gonna go back in business. So you see, that's all you're doing. That's the only strike I'm doing. Just literally just lifting it a little bit to the side. You'll know if you've got one on, obviously, you'll feel it shaking. It might be a little baby one, like a little baby perch or gudgeon or something. But as soon as I stop getting them little taps, I'm gonna wind back cast in again. Now I wanna be casting roughly every sort of five or six minutes, keeping that column of bait going in. If there was chub in the water or I'd, for, for example, then that would be a lot more often. I'd probably be casting every sort of two or three minutes because obviously um, fish like chub, I'd, they love feeding off the bottom, up in the water. So they'll be expecting that bait to be falling through. Whereas, there's another little dink there, is he on? I think it's a little tiny one. What's this? Oh, it's fell off. Never mind. It's getting out about that time to come back anyway. So you see, it's burgled the maggot. How dare it? So, we'll try it again. But it just goes to show you two casts. You know, I've had two signs. It's just all about. What are you laughing at, you, Rich? What's he doing now? What has he done? Is he up the air rate to get in on him, Rich? That's Go ahead, Jay. Got an eel. Hey, nice. You've actually hooked the cable. Got Mate, an eel. that is skills. <laughs> I wouldn't have admitted to that, Jay. You're not editing that out, Rich. You're getting that on. He's leaving that in, Jay. You know that. Where are you going? No moving pegs, mate. Come on. Anyway, got have a laugh, haven't you? You know what I mean? You've got to have a laugh. Don't take it too serious. He's got plenty of up lengths and rigs. Whereas if it was me, I'd be doing another rig up. You know what I mean? Anyway, coming back to it, let's get back to the fishing. Nice light tip on. Uh, so I can see all them little knocks. I mean, obviously, if you're on more sort of a, a natural venue, uh, you know, sort of like your traditional lakes or reservoirs, then obviously that's where braid comes in. But to be honest with you, you don't need braid on any any sort of commercial uh, I've been on. I've never found the need to fish braid. Certainly at sort of this distances anyway. Maybe a little bit further out, you know, somewhere like Barston, you might need it for the silvers. But then if you're like a big angry carp, it's going to be a bit airy. So a little bit of encouragement all the time. And it's just all about working out what the fish want. But certainly don't leave it any longer than sort of five or six minutes if you are after silvers on this. Again, if it's if it's carp, it'll be a little bit different. Leave it a bit longer. But again, you saw that, little tiny twitch, fish is on. Where a lot of anglers go wrong, they're just they're striking too hard. So it's pulling your maggots well away from your feed zone. Whereas if you just sort of like wind into the fish, yeah, by me roaches. If you just sort of like winding into the fish, then you know your hook baits, you know, it's not, it's not too far away from where your maggots are coming out of your feeder. And that's the beauty of it. You know, quick fishing, what we've been fishing sort of, what, getting on for 10 minutes, I suppose. And, you know, we've had three signs, we've had two fish. Um, you know, it, all about putting fish in your net, certainly match-wise. But again, you know, pleasure fishing. You just want to be getting bites, don't you? We've got two swims on the go, one where we've had carp from. So we're resting that. Hopefully them carp will come back into it later on. As I say, usually it's all about time of day. So when, you know, the sun goes down a bit and it starts coming a bit cooler, um, two o'clock onwards or what have you, then them carp will probably have a chew. But the way we're fishing now, we're just constantly ticking over, ticking over, keeping that weight going in, certainly match conditions. And also, obviously, oh, that was a bit better, Rich. Did you see that one? Did you get it in, mate? Oh, I don't think it's far hooked either. Now this here, I mean, obviously we've only got a light up length on, 0.13. This is why I'm using these nice soft rods. If you're on too sort of like, too heavy a rod, then obviously chances are you're just gonna pull out the fish. Well, that's the beauty of these nice little, nice little bomb rods. They've got loads of progressive action in, nice light tips. You're not gonna sort of bump anything, anything like that, risk that hook pulling out. And you can give them a bit of teddy as well, to be fair. What are you saying, Rich? I'm saying perch. What are you going for? Well, it might be a skimmer, actually. Yeah, I might give you that. But, again, just goes to show the uh, effectiveness of the maggot feeder. 
So we've had two little baby roach. Then we missed a bite. And then we've had this. Oh, what is it? Oh, it's a skim. It mate, you're right. Don't worry, folks. It's not far looked. I'm sure it's not far looked. Let me see. It's just wrapped round. Look at that beauty. Here's what you could have had, Jay. Look at that beauty. So on that, I don't think that has ever seen an up before. And that, again, just goes to prove the effectiveness of the maggot feeder, but also targeting fish like this on these kind of uh, commercials where pretty much all they see is pellets. So they're on a high protein diet over the summer and then they get overlooked, you know, um, yeah, over the summer when everyone's fishing for the carp. So like this time of year when it's cold, it's so important that you, that you target them. So we've already we've had like that skimmer a pound for them, two little roach. And we've only had four chucks, you just carry on, carry on at it. One thing I want to make clear though, and it's so important, and I can't stress it enough for when I'm coaching, is things like this. You've got to tidy your rigs up. So anything like that smeg all over your line, you've got to get that off. Now the way to do it, best way to do it, rather than just fold it up there to your knot, is make sure it's nice and tight in the middle of your line, get your finger and your thumb, and then just flick it off that way. So it's all nice and smooth again. And make sure that there's no slime whatsoever around the hook. Just squeeze that off and change your bait every single time. Don't need to with sort of like your, your harder baits like running a pellet comb before, but with softer baits, certainly maggots, worms, casters, make sure it's changed every time so it's as fresh as possible. I'm waffling, aren't I? I can't help a nice waffle. I like waffling. Anyway, I'm going to catch some more. Why don't you go and see if Jay's uh, catching some more aerators? <laughs> he didn't like that.